Hi my friends, welcome to Forever Yoga with Susanna. I am Susanna and today is Strong Bones Forever. Building bone density is near and dear to my heart. I actually increased my own bone density and I would love to tell you how, how I did that. If you're interested, you can go ahead and give me your email, uh, sign up for my email list and I will send you a copy of my personal program how I increased my bone density and reversed my osteopenia. So go ahead and do that. If you're new here, I welcome you. Please subscribe to the channel. Click that little subscribe button and let's get started. You'll just need your yoga mat and maybe a block. Go get that and I'll meet you back where we will start like we always do by getting grounded. Hi, and let us begin focusing on our skeletal structure in a short meditation where we really tune into the shape that our bones are making in whatever position we've chosen to sit in to start the session. So come to a comfortable position. You can sit on a block, you can sit cross-legged, you can sit on your kneels, I mean your heels, you can kneel on your heels, <laughs> whatever comfortable position you'd like to find. And just for about 20, 30 seconds, we'll close the eyes, go inside and scan around your body. Bring awareness to the bones of your feet your ankles, your shins, touching whatever they're touching, the floor or other parts of your body. Notice your knees and your thighs. Become aware of hips, pelvis and lower back. Bringing your mind to your spine. On your next breath through your nose, See if you can sit just a little taller as you lengthen up through your vertebra, kind of wiggle on up, breathing in, lengthening from your tailbone to your crown. And then with shoulders heavy and relaxed, notice, notice your elbows, your wrists and your hands and your jaw. Awareness of all the little muscles of your face and then your skull. And take the next few moments just to be still with your breath. Hyper aware of your skeleton in this position today. Awesome. And now please open your eyes. And let us begin movement by coming onto our mats on all fours. So transition, take your time, move anything in the way out of the way and come on down to your forearms. Pressing down onto your forearms, adjust your knees and your hips behind you. And now taking the left leg, slide the left leg back behind you and hold. You're pressing into the ball and toes of your left foot and breathe. Great. Now take that left leg and lift it straight up and hold. So it's approximately parallel to the floor, though you cannot see it. And hold. Breathing in and out. And then lower and lift it. So let the toes touch the floor, come back up. Do that three or four times. Lower and lift. And the next time that you've lifted it, heel to butt, squeeze heel into your butt with a hamstring curl. And do that three or four times. Bend and extend. Inhale, exhale. Always through your nose. Strengthening the muscles around your hip joint and your knee. Very beneficial for our skeletal structure. Good. When you're done with a few hamstring curls, pause lower and now slide the right node let's see that's the left leg so take your left leg to the left 
at a right angle to your mat. Your right or opposite forearm is your support. Root down in that forearm, make it parallel to the front of your mat. Hand on hip, press down, roll back. Option to extend your arm towards the sky. Good option to open and close your hand here or move your fingers or wrists around in random ways. Whatever you feel like doing, hold. Good. Inhale. On the exhale, hand comes to hip and then forearm is back to the mat. The leg that's extended out will slide behind you and keep going until you have taken it to the opposite direction about a quarter turn. Press down in the forearms, lift your upper body, turn and look over your right shoulder at your left foot. Making a C curve out of your spine. I, I am sorry that my back, my head is back to you. <laughs> Hold here and release. Good. Find a child pose. I like um, toes touch knees wide in this moment. So do whatever feels nice. Take a few breaths in a child. Again, because this is yoga, and because we are focusing on spine strength, take this resting moment to send awareness breath into your bones, into your hips, into your spine, knees, notice your feet. Good, and now begin to rise back up to do the other side. So crawl your way to the front of the mat on your forearms, the opposite leg, uh, in my case, that'll be, well, maybe in your case, the right leg. Whichever is the other leg, press into the ball and toe of that other leg, most likely the right leg. Hold. And now lift the leg up and hold. Squeeze. Press down and lift the upper body as well. Press the floor away with your forearms. And now lower and lift the extended leg three to four times, up and down up and down. Great. Now hold again. Hamstring curl. Heel to butt. Four times or so. Squeeze and extend. Squeeze and extend. How happy are your hips now that you've been doing hip strengthening work? Very happy, right? Hold it out again. Pause. Lower. Go to the same direction with that leg. So if it's your right leg, it's sliding to the right at a right angle. Left forearm is parallel to the front of your mat for support. And rotate to the side. Extend your arm up if you like. And make random movements with your hands, fingers, and wrists while you're up there. Good. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Inhale. Exhale. Good. And now you can look down. Slowly come down to your forearms once again. And then make a curve behind you. Slide your foot on the floor until you're going all the way out to the opposite direction, about a quarter turn out. Look over your shoulder at your foot. Breathe. Good, inhale. And then the exhale will bring you behind and two knees down. Good. Come all the way up to your tall kneeling position and hold. Step forward. Choose whichever leg is the non-habitual uh, one. So usually uh, one would, if you're right-handed, your right foot would go forward first. So choose the other one. Whichever one is non-habitual for you, curl your back toes, lift yourself up and forward and find your way to standing. Okay. With your feet approximately hip width apart, Bend your knees, get rooted and grounded, press the, into the floor, good. And then inhale, arms out to the sides and lift up. Exhale, fold forward and down. Standing forward bend with soft knees. Slide your hands up your shins, find flat back, inhale. Exhale, fold. Root down to rise up as you press the floor away. Energize the leg muscles and lift yourself up. Exhale, release your hands beside you. Place your hands on your hips. Step your left foot back, plant it at a slight angle. And then open your body to the left, 
and no exact position is necessary here. You can bend and straighten a little bit the knee. You might go a little over the knee, over the toes. You might rotate a little side to side. Yes, I'm asking you to kind of play with the position and just feel yourself adjusting. The foot kind of moves around. You bend, you straighten, you go to side to side. Now, if you have anything going on in that knee, this is an opportunity to listen to your knee and know, oh, going that way doesn't work, that way doesn't work, this does work, whatever works, okay? And you might have to straighten a little. Find what feels good. And now, your left hand on your left leg, right palm up, reverse warrior, breathe. Inhale, exhale. Place left hand on your hip, straighten the front right leg, lengthen, inhale, and exhale, drop down into an easy triangle pose, top shoulder rolls back. No need to go too far down here. Breathe. Feel your feet engage, feel your inner thighs engage, feel sort of a stretch through the chest. Option to extend the right left arm up, breathe. Inhale. As you exhale, come back up, extend the arms, and now airplane to your right, to the front leg. Hand on your hips, relax the shoulders. Bend the knee, you'll find warrior one. You might have to make a little adjustment for your hips to make some space for your hips. Both arms reach up. Good. Breathe in, breathe out. Warrior one. Inhale. On your next exhale, hand comes to your hips. Now I'll ask you to pivot your back foot so you'll be in the crescent moon warrior stance. So it's still warrior one, but your ball and toe of your back foot. Also known as Kripalu warrior one. Good. Take a breath. On your next breath, bring your weight on the front foot. That's your right foot. Bring the arms behind you like airplane wings and start popping your back foot forward until you can lift it off the floor any amount and then find a balance. You can go all the way into your standing stick pose, your warrior three, or you can just be kind of up with your toe just barely off the floor. It's, it's all excellent. Balancing on one leg, finding your breath. Inhale. As you exhale, Come up, touch the back foot down, readjust back into that lunge. Both arms up, sink down, twist now. So I'm going to be turning my back to you. You're going to turn your back to me. As we turn to the right, extend left arm straight forward, right arm straight behind you, and really stretch it. And also really energize your inner thighs. You're, you're pulling, and also see if you can feel your front foot pulling towards the back and your back foot pulling towards the front. So there's a lot of activation going on in this warrior twist. Inhale, exhale, come back up. And you can go ahead, open up into a warrior again. Straightening the left, right leg. Then pivot both feet forward, hands on your hips. Hips forward, heart to the sky, a beautiful back bend release, and back up to standing. Good. Pivot around, and we'll step forward to the other side of your mat to do the routine from this direction. With your knees slightly bent, feet more or less a few inches apart. Good. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, fold it forward. Once you're down, take an inhale and come up into your halfway flat back. Exhale, fold. Press down to rise up. Lift up. Inhale, release arms beside you. Good. Hands on your hips. The right foot will step back, plant it at an angle, front knee, bent. And take a moment like we did on the other side to play around, play around, knee forward, knee side, foot more or less straight. Yeah, okay. Don't get obsessed with the exact alignment. Just feel, 
feel. Feel weight on all parts of your foot, knee getting a little bit of a exercise and going different directions. But now find what feels comfortable for the routine, okay? So open your arms, warrior two. Take a breath in, turn your left palm to the sky, right palm touches the leg behind you, reverse your warrior. Stretch back, feel good. Inhale, straighten as you exhale the front. This time it's your left leg, most likely hand to the shin, top shoulder back, extend arm up, you find a triangle variation, breathe. Inhale, reach up, arms extend out. Keeping the legs straight, airplane to the front of your mat, which is now, might be the back of your mat, but that side where the foot is forward. Good, hold here, now bend the knee, find warrior one. You may need to make some adjustments for your hips and your knees for warrior one, hold here. Good, now hand on your hips, pivot your back foot so you're in the crescent moon variation, crescent lunge variation of a warrior one. Ball and toe of your back foot, find your balance. Once again, lift the arms up, inhale. Now, weight on the front foot, we're gonna come forward and do the balance. So, you pop the back foot up and see if you can just let the toe float off the floor as the arms come behind you like wings. And then your choice to see how far this would like to play for you today. You might go to parallel to the floor, you might lift the back leg up more, energize through the arms, hold, breathe, any form of balancing here is terrific. Holding and breathing. Now, touch down, step back. Good. Prepare for our twist. So you're on the ball and toe of your back foot as before. Both arms up. Now, turn and open. So I excuse my back to you, your back is to me anyway. Remember what we did on the other side. Imagine you're pulling your feet isometrically towards the midline, towards center. And you're activating your inner thighs and stretching through your collarbones at your fingertips. Really feel this twist. Inhale, exhale, and come back. Twisting to sit back, untwist to center. Plant your foot back down. Straighten the leg, pivot forward, and then arms extend out, turn your palms up, soften your right leg as you step over with the left into Tadasana Mountain Pose. Good, take a breath, and arms release beside you. And now, with your feet a few inches apart parallel, we'll do the most important bone strengthening move of this sequence. It'll be the heel drop or the bounce. So just start coming up onto your toes and then heels drop down as hard as you can do that. So knees do remain somewhat soft, up and down, and keep going. So I'd like to say do this for 25 times every day or a few times a day. It's what I did when I was on my major quest to build my bone density, and I can tell you that it worked. Heel drops, vibrates the bones. Inhale, exhale. Let's just go for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Last one, you could hold just a little longer. Balancing toe tadasan. Extend the arms up if you are so inclined. And release. Excellent. Shake it all out. A lot of work on our joints. Let's come down to our mats and finish up with Setu Bandhasan. Most important 
well, I think it's the most important, bone density building posture. I do it every single day, whether I'm taking a yoga session or not. And I recommend it highly. And you can do it in different ways, which would also be beneficial. Don't always do it the same way. So let's do it a slightly different way today than maybe the last time you did it. Walk your feet wider than your hips and bring your arms into cactus pose beside you. Good. Before we move up, let's windshield wiper the legs side to side just to release your hips and your lower back. Inhale, exhale. Good, and back to center with the feet grounded. Press down on the feet, activate the muscles of your legs, your inner thighs, your hips, and keeping the rib cage still on the floor, lift the hips up until you feel you have a pretty much a straight line going from your rib cage right through the side body to your knees and hold. So don't go into a full, full back bend. Keep your upper back still lower, low, but your hips are lifting. Activate the hips by breathing. Now come up on your tippy toes, breathing, and let the heels drop down and release. Lower your lower back, back to the floor. Place your hands on your belly. Bring the soles of your feet together, knees wide, and breathe in Baddha Konasana. Now, let the knees come back up. Walk your heels, this time close in towards your butt with your feet maybe two inches apart. So they're not exactly touching, but they're pretty close. Root down in your feet, in your heels. Arms can remain beside you now. Feel and activate the arms pressing down. Activate the feet. See if you can actually locate the tripod of each foot here. Big toe mound, picky toe mound, and the heels. So your feet are activated. Now lift your toes. Inhale. Exhale, relax the toes. Now press down on the tripod points and push up. Push up. Hips, knees go forward, hips go up, chest can go up further, sending the muscles of your spine into your up, 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 rib cage up. Press down with the arms and, arms and up with the chest, up with the hips, up, 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 breathe. So it's down and up simultaneously. Down with the feet, down with the arms, shoulders, up with the hips, up with the chest. Opposing moves here. Help to strengthen the bones. Hold, we're gonna hold for about three more breaths. So find your breath through your nose. Send your breath into your belly, send your breath into the chest. Exhale fully. Last 10 seconds. Don't forget to breathe with your mouth closed. Last little bit, inhale and release so nice to come on down yes your choice of what movement would serve you best to counter pose from that perhaps a knee across twist would be lovely here and any other movement that your body calls for remember it's your practice what is needed take a few moments to just tune in to whatever wonderful stretches would help counterpose all of that. And when you are ready, come on up to finish this session in a seated position. Once you have found your seat, Place one hand on your belly and the other hand on top of your hand on the belly. So both hands on your belly. Tune into the rise and fall of your breath in your belly. And then hands come into a prayer position. You can pause at your chest 
Then bring your thumbs to press into your forehead. So your thumbs are right at what we love to say in yoga is your third eye point. Press into your skull. Press into the point of your center of your forehead. Turn your eyes up and inwards, your eyes are closed. You're looking up and inwards into your forehead. Take a deep breath in and hold this next breath. Notice any colors, any sensations, any lights, whatever you see with eyes closed. And then when you're ready to exhale, hands can come back down to the heart center and release. I thank you so much for joining me today for Strong Bone Yoga. If you're interested in how I reversed my osteopenia and made my bones stronger, leave me your email and I will send you my five things I did. I think it's five, it might be more, but I'll send you my list of what I did, which uh, literally resulted in my bone density increasing. You can do it too. So uh, thanks again. Write me a comment. Uh, ask me a question. I'll answer it and send me a thumbs up. Mm -hmm.